Hello and welcome to the Metapod, the Pokemon TCG podcast that revolves around the evolving meta. It's episode 90, Sean. Oh, we are working our way towards episode 100 here soon. Wow, we're going to hit 100 in so many areas. We have over 100 ratings on Spotify. We're getting close to 100 reviews and ratings on Apple. We're almost at 100 subs on YouTube. Yeah, Here, 97 if, subscribers. Maybe by the time this comes out, this will already be past 100. So who knows? Well, it really helped because on YouTube, the I titled the video Decks That Beat Mew VMAX. Because <laughs> that's basically like what we talked about. <laughs> And it was our most viewed video so far, by far, of the like six podcast episodes that we have up so far. So it was it was pretty funny. Jake, actually. Jake killing it with the SEO there. Absolutely Got killing YouTube it. Brain. Yeah. Got that YouTube brain going on. <laughs> but we're here to talk about some wonderful, wonderful, and not so wonderful. Jake might get on the soapbox. It's been like 30 episodes since he's done that, I think. But we might uh, be talking a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly here on this podcast. Some product news that's coming, some hyped news, and some news that never came. I guess I should say is the best way to put it. But, Sean, how are you doing? I know you had some big, big weekend stuff going on. I did. I did. Big weekend indeed. I, you know, in my continued abandonment of the Pokemon TCG, I went to, I went to a Digimon Regionals. Anyone who follows me on Twitter has heard the story, but I'm sure a lot of the listeners don't know of my Digimon exploits. I went to a regionals, like 500 plus people in Miami. Uh, huge, huge. I mean, like, that was as big as, um, I guess, was the last, was SLC bigger probably? I think it was actually, but still. I think it was. But still, pretty big, pretty big for Digimon. Um, and I started off 0-2. Things were not looking great for you, boy. But... We ran it back 6-0 and to go 6-2 and and make top 64, Jake. So. Absolutely bonkers. I will say your event that you did play in was bigger than the Liverpool regionals, which we'll talk about later today. So, you know, I know I know y'all come here for that top tier Pokemon gameplay content, competitive content, but, you know, I got them Digimon credits too, I guess. <laughs> I will say, though, I think playing like... In all seriousness, I think playing like other card games helps you out in Pokemon because not only does it give you like a nice refresh of like just something different, but it also can help you like think about different strategies and like gameplay wise and sequencing because like in Digimon, you don't draw your deck as much as no. Pokemon for the most part. I know the deck that you like playing. <laughs> I remember you did a wombo combo like 40 cards and I was like, what on God's earth is going on? But um yeah it's just a different style of play that can help you out like when it comes to pokemon and thinking about like probability and chance and things like that and you know the what's the what's the correct line so yeah no there are definitely weird things because i think if you stick to one card game especially if you're new I, this is some pre pre-information out there before we really dive into the pod but like if you're new to a card game and you pick a deck it's great to learn but then I think you get a little tunnel visioned into playing the game the way that that deck or like the one or two decks you've played it is. And what the longtime players of Pokemon do, they've played so many decks now, it's almost like they play different games, right? When you have somebody who's like Sander who plays Control, but then all of a sudden you play like Mew for a couple of weeks, like wildly different experiences. And then all of a sudden you see the game differently. So I, I think it's similar, right? Like playing different games is similar to playing wildly different styles of the same game so it's incredible and we've got a bunch of different styles of decks that were played at the liverpool regionals that we are going to talk about today but sean mm -hmm. we have to talk about the lovely lovely five star reviews as we always do well i should say when i remember uh before we, we get into our main <laughs> topics yes you remember today though so so jake take it away I did, I did. This is from Big Ben, the true meta of TCG podcast. Wonderful, wonderful content, guys. Been listening for a while now, especially during work. The content you deliver is actually related to the collect collect collectability. That's a big word. My IQ is just not high enough. Collectability and competitive scenes. This is where you go for all the TCG content you could want 
Yes, I, I, I love that. It's the synopsis. I know the last couple weeks. It's been very competitive. IRL events back. We've, yeah, we've really jumped on competitive. Just again, with IRL events coming back and we haven't had it for two years, like we've had like three regional weekends in a row, Sean. And this weekend is going to be another one, Sao Paulo in Brazil. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's really, I guess, because, I mean, this is, you know, America-centricity here. I'm like, oh, SLC, next regionals isn't until, what, you know, uh, May in Indianapolis. Yeah, I think it's Indy. Yeah, so, like, here in America, we, we got another little drought, but the rest of the world keeps, keeps moving, and then you have EUIC. Anyway, we'll get into all that. We'll get into all that, and but we love that you all have been loving the podcast. If you want to leave us a review, whether that's one star, five stars, three stars, whatever, make sure to leave that on Apple and Spotify. You can leave ratings, but Apple and YouTube comments as well. Mm -hmm. You can leave reviews about the podcast. Tell us how we're doing, what you like. Say hi to Sean. Ask Sean what underwear color he's wearing today. Anything? Well, not <laughs> anything, but most things. I mean, you can't ask anything. We don't have to answer. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll answer. I'm not, I'm not oh, afraid. Jake. Oh, Jake. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into our first topic today. If you're in Japan and the United States and everywhere around the world, you're actually going to be able to get these cards in this new product that is coming out. So at least we'll talk about it in Japan because these are where these cards are originating from. But there is a new set of promos releasing in correlation with Legends RCS, a promo of Rowlet, Cyndaquil, and Oshawott, the three different starters that you can choose from in Legends RCS. Those are going to be KFC promos, Sean. Kentucky mm -hmm. Fried Chicken. When was the last time you had Kentucky Fried Chicken? I mean, it's been, it's been 84 years. Yeah, it's been a very long time. I think there was one time in college I got kfc because i was like oh if i get the bucket <laughs> i can have this for like five meals or what i like oh man dark times <laughs> but anyways these will be coming out in pokemon centers gym tournaments starting march 25th and you know that's when you buy tcg items but for a majority of our listeners internationally you'll be able to get this in the collector's bundle which releases on march 25th which at the time of this recording is like three days ago so you can go get these already <laughs> it's a collector's chest as well that you'll be able to get those in also which is may 6th in the collector's bundle box sean you are not only going to get the three promos but you also get seven booster packs it looks like a bunch of stickers as well and uh, just a ton more stuff. And I believe as well in the col in the collector's chest, you'll get a lot of these same stuff. But packs, really cute promos. The Rowlet, I, I, I just love all things Rowlet, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Question for you. What I was just thinking about this. What is the baby, like the, the, the starting, the basic Pokemon for Blaziken? What's the name of that one? Torchic? Yeah. It's good that they didn't choose a, a promo with Torchic for KFC. <laughs> That would... <laughs> oh yeah yeah that would be that would be very interesting that would be kind of wait would that be i don't know if that would be like a cool tie i don't know kentucky fried torching torch i don't know McDonald's. yeah i mean uh, all i'm saying is a place known for their fried chicken if you have a torch chick there ah, oh. anyways that's way off topic <laughs> Anyway, something that is not here yet, Sean, but mm. let me tell you, I think I think this dropped like right after we recorded the pod last week, but Pokemon had teased that mm. there was going to be a new item reprint coming out in Space Juggler. And they I mean, they hyped this up. They were like, oh, you know, new item coming reprint. And they never talk about like specific reprint teasers. So. We were all like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be crazy. Maybe it's a beloved card, you know, versus Seeker Battle Compressor, maybe coming back. But, Sean, let me tell you, Energy Lotto coming in space. I'm like <laughs> juggler. I, 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 I see this. You know the sound effect that bum, 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 bum. Mm. that's literally the sound effect here. 
Now, don't get me wrong. Space <laughs> Juggler, a pretty good card. If you do not know what oh, space... Energy or, Lotto. Sorry, it, Energy Lotto. Energy Lotto is a good card. It is a good item card. If you don't know what it does, look at the top seven cards of your deck. You may reveal an energy card you find in there and put it in your hand, shuffle all the other cards back into your deck. Sean, this has the ability of getting uh, of getting special energy because it's just it's energy cards. Doesn't this specify... And so you're looking at Arceus decks, right? Arceus, the brand new face. We've been talking about Arceus archetypes for weeks on this podcast at the competitive level. Yeah, This is a good card for Arceus decks. This is even a good card in decks like Mew. Honestly, like I know you have Eliza Sparkle, but imagine if you can use Eliza Sparkle, get two energy, or I'm, hold on, correct sequencing. Use Energy Lotto first, to grab an energy because you'll have more energies in the deck. And then you will Eliza Sparkle or Elisa Sparkle or however you pronounce her name. I can't remember to accelerate even more energies. Basically for Meloetta to guarantee that 210 almost on turn one. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, the fusion strike energy, double turbo energy. Like there's a whole host, like even twin energy for some of those single prize decks out there um yeah japan if you watch the recent japan champions league i know azul uh was watching some of the rounds on his stream you would have seen a lot of like zorark wormadam box decks that we kind of yep. saw at the beginning with uh pramawat michael pramawat was playing that at the uh tricky gym event so you would have seen that a lot. And Energy Lotto would help out that deck as well. Cause like you would find your double turbos, you'd find your twins way easier, you know? Like, yeah. It, I mean, it's not the card that we all thought it would be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing, right? Where it's like, hey, look, it's not just, it's not a bad card. It's a card that has a history in the game. Fair enough. But you know what had a history in the game, Jake? Ultra Ball. Yeah. Like why? It got reprinted though. It got but I know, but like they didn't give Ultra Ball this level of fanfare, but like Energy Lotto gets this and I'm like it's cool, but like Ultra Ball Ultra Ball is the MVP reprint yeah, card. Yeah, what about What about like Master Ball? Right? Like we haven't had Master oh. Ball since the uh the the Plasma, the like um Ace Specs. That's what it is. Yeah. Master Ball was an Ace Spec. Like what about that? Like What about Computer Search? Introduce yeah, give me a computer search so that I don't have to freaking although that's a little bit tough though, well, Sean, because like they limited it in A specs yeah. to just one in your deck. And so like I mean if they just reprinted an item, then that would be like play four computer searches in your deck, and that would be broken. Like Cramomatic? Scoot over Cramomatic. Like, I'm gonna put a computer search in my deck. But like you know how they have the new amazing Pokemon, right? Is that what they're called? Yeah. Just having the ha sparkling, I think sparkling. they're called. Okay. Sparkling. I mean, I know it doesn't quite make sense thematically, but like call them sparkling items too. I don't know. We have a sparkling computer search. I mean, why not? We had, there was literally a Pokemon called V Pokemon. And I'm like, oh, I, oh, guess what I'm getting? I'm getting my V card today. I mean, come that. Mm. V Union, V Max, V Star. We got all the V's in here, but. <laughs> Sean, I will say that the craziest news out of all mm -hmm. that happened in the last week were the Liverpool Regionals. Yes. Now, Liverpool Regionals, if you do not know, an event over in Europe, the next regional that was on the radar. Unfortunately, there was no stream like there was for Salt Lake City, so there was no way you could watch it. And But there were a lot of people talking about it, a lot of people you know, that maybe couldn't play in the event or dropped early in the event that were talking about like what the best decks were, you know, who was doing well. And so especially big shout outs to Pokestats, um, the crew that runs Pokestats TCG on Twitter and their site. They did an excellent job giving us the information that we needed to know about the event itself. And we don't have every single deck list that was present in this event just because people haven't posted it or you know it wasn't like it was run on play limitless's website but we do have a lot of the cool lists going on but sean let's just look at the top 32 right now the top eight top 16 mm -hmm. all that stuff and let me tell you i don't think anybody 
would have guessed really and uh, well i should say most people because obviously robin Scholz, the winner did guess that this was gonna win but <laughs> well yeah. at least us i uh, will be the first to admit we did not think that urshifu was going to be the winning deck of liverpool regional sean sean have you looked at the list i have i have actually oh, you have i was gonna i was gonna ask you to guess what was in the list because i mean it's I, uh i was on twitter a lot this weekend so i definitely <laughs> i saw this news come out and i had to take a look i was like rapid strike urshifu one and i'm like okay urshifu and what moltres rapid strike urshifu moltres i Baby believe moltres there was as a meta Intellion. champ yeah there was a lot of things in there we'll get to the list later because yeah. robin posted it but a finals that you wouldn't expect because they went up against rapid strike malamar sean my one of my favorite decks in this format really just doing well but if you look at the rest of this top four or even top eight third place mu v max okay you know mu's good yeah it was good i think we can all say yes to that fourth place arceus intellion which i believe um it should more be like arceus dark package was it the dark package um, there were a it lot just of, had an Intellion engine? Yes, it had an Intellion engine, but there were a lot of dark attackers, which we'll actually get into the list later because a friend of uh, Alessandro Frenda, I probably said that name incorrectly, but a friend of theirs posted their list for them. Okay. Um, so we do have access to the list. Fifth place. This is the cheekiest of them all sean and i have been actually playing this on ptcgo for the last 24 hours sander the control master top aiding liverpool regionals with zorark control wild yeah i mean i think what 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 uh what card was he looking for that everybody was like we need this card was that a meme did it end up in the deck Oh, so this was a legitimate thing that he was looking for. He was looking for Sandy Gas. So Sandy oh, Gas, yeah. if you do not know, is like a mill card. You mill stuff with it. And with Zorark, you can turn into the stage one of Sandy Gas. You just attach Curse Shovel and stuff like that. Um, but he couldn't He couldn't find and nobody could loan him a Palisand, which, oh. I mean, he tweeted before the event, who could lend me a Palisand? So he had to adjust the night before when he couldn't get one. But he did talk a little bit on uh, he did talk a little bit on Twitter after the event when everybody was asking him, including myself, where's the, where's the pal sand feels bad. But he talked about how there's like a potential like infinite loop and stuff that you can use with um, Palo sand and how there's like different ways that you can build this Zorar control mill box type of deal. Um, there's how there's a lot of possibilities that are left to be explored, different combos that you can do. So that makes me really excited, not only for Sao Paulo, but also Indianapolis, Sean. Well, I mean, EUIC, right? You assume he'll bring that list oh, yeah. to EUIC, so. There's a lot of possibilities, and he didn't even have the most ties out of any player, Sean, because Robin Scholz, the winner, <laughs> went 9-0-5. <laughs> oh my god i don't even know i mean he might have he might have id'd and a couple of times to get into the top cut i don't know so that might be a couple of those ties there well i don't i don't know exactly how many because i know that he was playing winning ends for a, for a hot minute because mm, he had a lot of ties yeah <clears throat> i think he had a lot of ties more earlier in the in the event interesting I, yeah, but Sean, I, there was another. Oops, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. But in sixth place, Joe Bernard Omnipoke, wonderful content creator that you all should follow, posted his list two or two days before the event on Twitter and then decided at the last second, you know what? I'm not going to play Mew VMAX. I'll just play this list that I did. And his <laughs> Rapid Strike Malamar list also made top eight. Seventh place was Arceus. Yeah, uh, probably like bird counter, yeah. like more like Ian box. Rob's list. I don't think we have this list, but with the Zapdos being the partner Pokemon, I think we can assume it's kind of like a Ian Rob style. And Nicholas Moffat, I think, was the other player that 
played the list at Salt Lake, but um, and then at eighth place, rounding it out, Mew Vmax. But Sean, yeah. this is, in my opinion, I love this top eight. Yeah, the top eight's pretty wild. Like just two Arceus, two Mew, right? Is that correct? Yeah, two Arceus decks, yeah. two Mew decks, two Malamar Rapid Strike, which I know has been your go-to for a while. Yeah, I love that list. Like so fun. A control and a Rapid Strike Urshi deck. Like it's it's a wild, it's a wild list. Um And think about it, just the week prior, right? The top eight was flooded with like dark box decks, you know, different Gengar lists, Arceus Gengar lists, things like that. So really just like we went from what did we go from? We went from Mew V Max in Brisbane, right? Yep. Winning a fusion strike deck. The next weekend we won single strike deck, Gengar. And then the next weekend is a rapid strike fighting deck. Yeah. So we've had this like trio of different three straight weekends, three different archetypes winning, three different styles really of winning. I mean, I, I think this goes to show more than anything, the meta is very, it's it's become very reactive to weakness. It's my guess. Um, I'm obviously not playing quite as much as even you, Jake, or others, but if I see these three weekends in a row and I think to myself, Everyone's like movie max super consistent RCS new we, like who knows if it's like what the right version of it is fine Mew wins next weekend everyone is gunning for Mew there are, like there was like a bunch of Gengar decks in the top 16 or top 32 of Salt Lake some of them had RCS some of them didn't and that's what eventually won right is or wait did RCS Duraludon win Brisbane actually no, it no, was no, it, it was Natalie Miller playing right. Mew Max because right, she right. said yep. like right before Lake of Rage, like she said on Lake of Rage right before Brisbane, she was like, "I'm playing Mew Max. It's the best deck." Yeah. And then she ended <laughs> up winning with it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and then all of a sudden you see Rapid Strike, which is a fighting style deck which will hit Arceus because you know I don't know how many of the Arceus players are playing the Dunsparce anymore that prevents weakness mm -hmm. now. So you have an RC, you have a rapid strike deck also taking advantage of the fact that nobody seems to be bothering with Manaphy, right? Like you have all of these decks that are running like Inteleon packages in the back or Genesect packages in the back and you're like I mean, I'll just I'll ping you for some damage here and there. We're good. We're good. We'll spread it around with our own Inteleons. Nobody's playing Manaphy. So, and then you can also combo that with those dark type Pokémon for Mew. And it just, uh, it's, 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 it's tough, man. It's tough. It's very interesting too. It's like how I talked about last week in terms of meta calls, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you anticipate what is going to come to the event and then you try to counter Robin Scholes, you know, anticipated a lot of dark decks, a lot of Malamar decks, things like that. And so therefore with Arceus running around everywhere also, was able to call and, you know, make a good meta call, a good deck. This is actually, though, it's actually Tord's list. Tord actually said oh, on yes. Twitter, and it was confirmed that he made the list and then gave it to the Limitless guys. And then all of a sudden, you know, Robin just ends up winning with it. I mean, do you want to take a look at Robin's list now and chat about it? We can take a look at Robin's list because I actually have something else to mention about robin's list now this is an insane deck um it's it's got so much going on in my opinion now i'm i'm covering up a little bit of the deck but just trust me when i say two two line of urshifu v and v max and then the four three two uh sable drizzle and teleon lines that we've With been split, seeing the last couple it, weeks it does have a split in teleon top end yes so the two different Intellions, one quick shooting, one shady dealings. Yeah, which we've actually seen a lot yeah. of lately, especially with decks that play for scoop up nets. But it's interesting in this deck, Sean, because it plays 22 one ofs. Oh my God. <laughs> 22 cards. So when I say one of, Sean, and we, we talk about one ofs, we're talking about one copy of a specific card. So. 
there is one Medicham in here. There is one Octillery. There is one Remoraid. There is one Zinnia's Resolve. There is one Peonia. Like, there are a ton. I mean, I feel like one it's funny with this many one ofs, you almost have to play the Peonia, right? Because then, like, if it gets prized, you need to know where to find it in your prizes. Yeah, and I mean, that goes with the different counters. So, like, for instance, Medicham, you know, you're playing against uh, Rapid Strike Malamar. Mm -hmm. And so, Rapid Strike Malamar, you do spread damage and stuff. But if a Malamar's in the active, and you do rapid strike or you do the the rapid G Max rapid flow mm -hmm. attack on Urshifu V Max, you don't actually knock out mm. the uh you don't actually knock out the Malamar in the active. And so there's different ways that you can get there, like quick shooting in Teleon the next turn to hit the Malamar, and then you can Medicham to Yoga Loop mm -hmm. to KO the Malamar and get yourself another consecutive turn. So there's a lot of like little things like that about this list. It's a very, very complex list. I've seen a bunch of people lately playing the list, trying out the list, and everybody across the board says that this, le this list is huge brain. Like, think of a control deck and then put a little bit more on that, and that's what this list is. Because I guess the, di the difference between this and control, I guess, is control, it's not to say it's not big brain, but it has a loop that it wants to get into, right? Mm -hmm. And once you are in the loop, it's it it's kind of like um, it's like a Very computer. Methodical. Yeah, it's like a computer program, right? In which you like mm -hmm. you do the loop every time, and if there's a small thing that changes on the field, you just got to make sure you can address that. But then otherwise, it's really about getting into your loop. So that's where sequ sequencing comes in with control. But this, I think, every single match in every single situation, it's like what cards do I need right now? And you just have to evaluate. It feels like a turn by turn evaluation, which is like, it's gotta be a lot of mental effort. And you talk about a lot of lists like Mew VMAX playing like three Eliza Sparkles, four bosses orders, you know, just a lot of the same supporter. And in this list, in Robin Scholl's winning list, there is no multiple supporters in this list. Every single supporter is a one of, and We've talked about, you know, the different ways that list can be consistent and list can be good. This is all thanks to the Inteleon engine, in my opinion. I've said, like, through Inteleon engines, you can start playing a lot more techs. You can start playing a lot more one-ofs. And this list kind of, like, embodies that because, well, you just Drizzle and you search for whatever you need that turn, right? Yeah, it, I will say it feels very refreshing to see a list that, it almost resembles expanded lists. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's instead of like this this format of consistency as king, because I think that's what we have heard for decks for the last, the entire time I've been playing at least, like three years now. Um, the, the phrase consistency is king, like you're playing three ofs and four ofs of everything in your deck. We're playing four research, four Marnie, you know, four quick ball, four ultra ball, right? It's like, and you play like that, and then you just start to think to yourself, like, oh, it just it seems so samey. Like, every deck, all you're doing is changing out the Pokemon and the energy, but everything else is the same. But this is, like, it's a breath of fresh air. It's so interesting. And to be honest, Sean, you know, I don't... Here's what I'll say about it. No, this is no discredit to Robin Scholz. He's a phenomenal player. He's way better than I'll ever be. I don't think this was like the best list in the tournament, to be honest. I think that this was the best deck in the top eight of decks that made it in. Mm -hmm. So like in top eight, you had two Rapid Strike Malamars. We've already talked about how you can win that matchup, how especially if they don't have Manaphy. And even then, even if they do have Manaphy, looking back to different spread decks in the past when we had Mew from Unbroken Bonds, right? Mm -hmm. spread decks still um beat decks that had mew in them it just was a little bit more difficult it mm -hmm. was still possible and and sometimes you were still favored but it just made it a little bit harder and so manaphy kind of brings that same concept and so you had two malamars you had two um you had two what's it called arceus decks right which urshifu i mean just absolutely like bodies urshifu like, just absolutely destroys it. 
And then you have a Mew deck as well. Mew decks, right? You may think like, oh, Mew might be a little bit difficult, but look down there, Sean. Look at that little Moltres down there. That mm -hmm. little Galarian Moltres and a Clara in the list as well. So, I mean, we've seen different iterations of decks, you know, Arceus list playing this baby Moltres. We've seen the beginning of like the Dark Dudes deck where it was like the Galarian Weezing Sableye little Moltres things. We've seen so many Moltres in these lists that it's made that matchup now favorable or mm -hmm. even like even if it's not favorable, like way more manageable. I guess is the is the better term because you might not you might not guarantee that you beat Mew and you may not auto beat Mew with Galarian Moltres, but it, you give yourself a way better shot, yeah. Sean, having that extra option, that extra attacker in this like toolbox deck and with with Sanders Controlist as well. Like it's that same concept as Malamar. Like you just snipe stuff, you just you just get things out of there before they can really get into the loop and really get going and and. It's it's incredible how well positioned this deck was for the uh, for the top eight. No, I think you're I think you're right. Like Robin, I, I think if Robin didn't make it to day two, nobody mm -hmm. talks about this list. And that's that I think he was he built a day two deck and tried to yeah. bring it into day one. And that's always difficult because if you're really teching hard for the what you think is going to be the top end. When you get to like three, four, five hundred people, though, you might face some really wonk stuff in day one, and that can just end it for you. You'd be like, this deck could have gone, you know, five and zero oh day two, but <laughs> yeah. And think about this too: he had five ties, yeah. So he was riding a long time, like a loss means that I'm out. Yeah, you know, he rode that he rode that line for a long time, so he almost didn't even make it into you know i don't know exactly if he almost or almost did not make it into day two but at least top eight i wonder yeah i wonder what his day one record was it's interesting but yeah i mean yeah i i, I gotta try this deck out it's just one of the few decks that i also think i because you know i haven't been buying as many singles i actually think i have all the cards for this deck also, Rapid Strike Urshifu VMAX is the prize on ladder right now. So you can actually get the two Urshifu VMAXs to be able to play this deck if you just complete the first two stages of the ladder shot. So that's Ooh. that's something. I will say Robin Scholes, after day one, was 5-0-4. Oh, oh my gosh, that is... So he barely made it in that's I feel that's like. 19 points yeah five wins times three is 15 four ties mm -hmm. four that's 19 that is exactly the amount you need almost didn't make Ooh. it like literally one loss would have said sorry you don't make day two so like it's it's absolutely crazy the way that the the way that tournaments work yeah as well right like and these timed events, you know, timed events just take naturally longer to play your games. And so it's crazy. Again, all credit to the Limitless team and, you know, Robin for piloting this deck because I've seen so many people play it so far. And it, it feels like nobody's figured this out besides <laughs> Robin. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about some of the other decks here? We have um, Alessandro's deck. Uh, the person that you said his friend posted it for him on Twitter. So this... Is... Main top four, and the big thing that I want to talk about this deck is this is pretty much like Arceus and Teleon with some dark options inside it. Now, the dark options include Galarian Moltres, Baby. Sean, which we've already we've already talked about <clears throat> this card already and how how crazy it's been. But also something that a lot of people I don't think anybody really would have guessed a one one <laughs> line. Of Crobat VMAX. Sean, how crazy is that? I mean, I don't know if he was like testing it out and because you have the whole engine of Drizzile into Inteleon, right? So you're like, and the Arceus ability. So I guess you're like, oh, how much draw do I really need? But maybe there's just turns where you're like, yeah, maybe I want to go get a Crobat and draw up to six again. Yeah, I mean, think about that. You know, the Crobat is a draw supporter, right? It's a support Pokemon. We've seen this in lists. This is not an uncommon card. But think about something like the Mew VMAX matchup. A lot of times when you are 
playing Arceus decks, right? Especially your turn one, right? Your turn one, you have to get energies. You have to get an energy attachment on. I mean, you don't have to, but it, <laughs> it really helps when you do, right? It really helps your game plan. So one of the things that people are doing in order to make sure that they get a turn one energy, especially when you're going first and you can't use a draw supporter mm -hmm. of any sort, is they're playing Crobats. So think about some of the best decks that we have right now. Mew VMAX, Sean, weak to dark. <laughs> Crobat VMAX does 180 damage for three dark energy. Do you know what other dark Pokemon that's been pretty good lately has an attack for three dark energy? That, that pairs up with Arceus sometimes? Galarian Moltres V? Well, I mean, I guess you could do that, but I was thinking <laughs> Gengar. Gengar VMAX yeah. just won Salt Lake City. And the reason that it did that with the basic energies is because Arceus would accelerate energies onto the Gengar. So basically this person, Alessandro Ofrenda, had that same concept but was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a one card inclusion of the Crobat VMAX. Boom, slap that in. And to be honest, like you might actually win. You may, say, you may basically like auto win the Mew matchup, especially because this is a closed deck list format, right? People don't know about Crobat VMAX unless yeah. you just played them or you were sitting right next to them while you were playing and you're like, oh, oh my gosh, did double take. You know, what are you playing? And so... Here's how I think about this in terms of the Mew matchup. Like, Mew probably needs to get one tablet, right? Mm -hmm. For Meloetta to turn one KO in RCSV or something like that. Because they get to 10 and then power tablet, I believe it's they buster. need that or the choice belt ban thing, whatever, to be able to do that. The, the power tablet or choice belt adds the same amount of damage. Okay. But that makes one less out for them to be able to go all the way up to KO a 300 HP Crobat VMAX. And this is before potentially a big charm could jump on a Crobat VMAX because Genesect V, Sean, because Mew copies Genesect V's attack, is 210 base. Mm -hmm. And so 210 in order to get to 300 you need all four power tab or well, you, you need, need three power tablets or two and a three choice power belt. tablets yeah or the choice belt but either way you need three damage modifiers as mu v max and with the big charm not even four you'd have to have four would get you there because uh, it puts you at yeah, 330 you have have four four damage modifiers so like that's pretty tough i mean mu draws a lot and mu is a very aggressive deck but if you're playing path to the peak right you can stall that out. And so this is a, I just want to talk about again, like metagaming, you know, just making the right calls for things like it's, it's incredible, like deck building in yeah. a closed deck list <laughs> format. And just the, the beauty of it. I just love that we're back to IRL play, Sean. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this is cool. I mean, it makes me think like, as long as Mew Max is relevant, you could play Arceus and Teleon in whatever counts that you think makes sense. And then just sort of throw in a 1-1 one, one VMAX line of something. Because yeah. Arceus can use any energy, right? It doesn't matter. So you could throw a 1-1 one, one line. The other card that I, I think people have been toying with here and there, I get the extra value of Crobat into Crobat VMAX. The poison that comes from, I think, Crobat VMAX is also maybe useful, but... Malamar, yeah. Malamar VMAX, you know what it does for three energy? 180. And you know what it also does? You get to put a trainer card on the bottom of your opponent's deck, I think, or shuffle yeah. it back in. So I'm like... I mean, we didn't see we didn't see Malamar VMAX win, but it was the talk of the town for a little bit in terms of the uh, Salt Lake City Regionals. So, mm -hmm. like, again, like, it's just innovative deck building and, and cool new ideas that come up. Jake... Are you ready? Have you warmed up enough for Sander for the deck oh, list? I've been, of... I've been playing this list. I've been having so much fun. Okay, Jake. Like playing this list online. I'm pretty sure people hate me as I'm playing this list online, I, but I'm having fun. I will say this. I will, I'll go through the cards that I know, and then you can mm -hmm. tell me the rest of the cards that I'm like, what do these do? So Okay, I'm getting TCG player at yes. the ready so I can so, look at the card. 
the basic way that this control list, for people who are watching on YouTube, you can see the list. I'll explain the list, though, to the listeners. You've got a 3-3 Chinchino line because that's your draw engine. It's a one-prizer. You discard one card to draw two. You know, pretty straightforward. It does have an ability to attach energy, but it's basics, and there's no basic energy in the deck. Whatever. Don't worry about that. It's your draw engine. And then you have three Snorlax with Gormandize. If it is in the active, you can draw until you have, what, six cards in your hand or five? I believe it's seven. Seven. Okay, yeah. So the idea there is that early game, you just cycle your deck, right? You have Gormandize out. You're playing Bird Keepers to switch them out if you really need it, scoop up nets. But really, you're drawing through your deck to find all the pieces you need for whatever matchup it is. And then finally, the other engine piece, I would say, is Zoroark, which you said earlier, Jake. For those of you who don't know, Zoroark has the ability that once, you know, once it comes out onto the field, you can change it with another stage one in your discard, in your trash, without, you know, you can just do it, right? You just swap places, kind of like Ditto V, you know, like, aha, I'm a Zoroark, JK, I'm a, a Galarian Weezing now, you know, whatever. Um, you can just do that throughout the game as needed for whatever combo piece you need, whatever stage one that you need. Um, and it retains all of the, you know, uh, conditions. So if the Zorark was on the field the turn before and then you do it, you can actually Evo that if you wanted to into a stage two. And it would retain that memory, if you will, of being on the field. Anyways, now, Jake, those are the engine pieces. But all right. what are all these random Pokemon that I also see? What do they do? So let me talk about first Altaria. So we probably know what Altaria is because this, when it first came into the game, um, it was popular because it is the same kind of as Decidueye in terms of its ability. You have a two, one line of Swablu Altaria. Altaria just being a wall, right? Cannot be hit or take, it cannot take damage from Pokemon Vs and GXs. Vs in the Pokemon trading card game encompasses any of the Pokemon Vs. So Vs, V maxes, V unions, and V stars, Sean. So basically, most decks in the format. Most attackers. I will say. Yeah. Yeah, most attackers in the game. I will say with Galarian Weezing, Sean, you will actually never use Galarian Weezing's attack. Hmm. Because you do because... not have dark energy. <laughs> yeah, you don't play any dark energy. So it's really only available to stall, right? To stall different mm -hmm. decks like Mew, uh, Starbirth with Arceus, uh, Malamar decks. It's really just there to slow down the game to keep you from progressing. Because let me tell you, you were talking about the Snorlax, you know, Gormandize, and how you play like Bird Keeper, Scoop Up Nets to move that guy out of the active. Honestly, like you force your opponent to take six prizes, no matter what, because you are not playing any multi-prize Pokemon. No Vs, no V stars, no nothing. So you can take the game a little bit slower, right? So if that guy gets stuck in the active and it gets KO'd, okay, that's basically a free switch, right? Like, <laughs> it's fine. It's better that than, like, your Chinchino or yeah. your Zerua. So that's totally okay. The Yivatol in this list. There is a one of Yivatol. Yivatol is a Pokemon card from Celebrations. Sean, did you think any of the cards from Celebrations were competitive? Uh, is this the one that does nasty stuff to special energy? Yes, it does. Okay. For two colorless energies, right? So a double turbo attachment because you're playing multiple double turbos in your list. Or, you know, two turns of, uh, of capture energy, which is possible because you slow down the game a lot of times. This Yvatol has Cry of Destruction. Discard up to three special energies from your opponent's Pokemon. Not just the active... OK, this is three special energies anywhere. This is double turbo energies that you find. This is multiple fusion strike energies that you find. Hiding energies, rapid strike energy, single strike energy. This is the whole shebang, Sean, and three of them. That's you wild. know how many copies of a special energy you can play in your deck? Four, well, yeah, four of us, any type, yeah. Four, so like that is huge in terms of being able to Slap down a Yvatol, attach a double turbo to it, instantly move it to the active, and almost auto win Mew, Mew yeah. VMAX, because we've seen this trend lately, especially like, you know, Brisbane and stuff. People aren't playing 
single or I'm sorry, basic energies in their Mu V Max deck. So if you take away the fusion strike energies, you take away the double turbo energies, you can't do anything. That's true. It's incredible. John. And none of those decks run Roseanne's backup. So if this becomes popular, you might start seeing Roseanne's backup. Just saying. You have a Rapid Strike Gorbis down there, another one of your stage ones that you can evolve into on Zork. This um, ability, we talked about this on the pod and wondered if it was going to see any sort of play, but this Gorbis here has the ability to shut off Rapid Strike Pokemon abilities. So, you know, you talk about your, uh, what's that Pokemon? Inteleon. Oh, Inteleon yeah. is everywhere right now because well it's just good you know you have also other pokemon like octillery octillery in the list that we just showed the urshifu list is a rapid strike pokemon and then also malamar plays it yeah as well it's the big big part of why malamar is so good and so shutting off those pokemon is absolutely huge sean yeah, I will say, in terms of this, if it had played against the top deck, I don't know if they actually played Sander and Robin, but, like, the Gorbis and the Manaphy, which is basically Mew Bench Barrier, um, it shuts off both the Quick Shooting Inteleon and the Spread Damage. So you just sort of sat there with, like, huh, the rest of my engine does, the rest of my strategy doesn't work. <laughs> Also to mention, you talked about the memory. You know, Zork has the ability to remember how long a mm -hmm. Pokemon is in play. You can evolve into the stage two Dusknor, Sean. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this when it first released and you know, I kind of maybe hyped it up a little bit too much, but it's seen some play here and there. But if you do not know, this Dusknor has an ability to shut off special energy, just makes them colorless. Single colorless energy, so double turbo. Sorry, it's well, single colorless. Oh, it makes them single colorless now. That's I'm pretty sure it makes it single colorless. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was they just provide colorless instead of whatever color it is, but I know it says provide single colorless energy and have no other effects. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's also good against fusion strike though, because you need it. You sometimes need it to be a color of sorts, right? Maybe. Do you? For Meloetta, you do, yeah. but for Mew, you don't. Yes, that's fair. But it would also shut off. I mean, it wouldn't really matter in this deck per se, but mm -hmm. let's just hypothetically say there was like some quick shooting Inteleons in there. If you're facing a Fusion Strike deck, having this Dustnor here would actually shut off the effect of Fusion Strike energy. And so you would be able to quick shooting. You'd be able to Zigzagoon ping. Mm -hmm. You'd be able to do those on the. Uh, on the Pokemon that has the Fusion Strike energy. So a, a neat little tidbit there. But Sean, one that I definitely had to look up, I had no idea what this card did before, prior to this. Ribombi. Sean, what do you think this Ribombi does because it's covered up? I, I want to uh, do a guessing game. Oh no. Okay, so what do we got? We got walling, we've got stalling, we've got energy destruction. I mean, I want to say that this Rabombi, I, I would love to see hand, disrupt, hand disruption. That would be my guess. You are close. Okay. But for one colorless energy, you can do the attack on Rabombi Tricky Steps for 30 damage. You may move an energy from your opponent's active Pokemon to one of their benched Pokemon. So we talked about basic energies. Malamar plays basic energies. You have Mew plays, some Mews play basic energies. You know, some haven't moved off of it yet. And then you have other decks like Urshifu and things like that that, you know, may play like fighting energies or dark energies. You can move that energy to a completely different Pokemon, a Pokemon that is irrelevant in the game, <laughs> that is never going to attack, never going to need that energy because it doesn't specify whether it's basic or special yeah. energy. So you're playing a deck that has basic energies that... Dusknor doesn't shut off or Cry of Destruction doesn't get away. You use Rabombi to be able to just move those. And Sean, do you know why also there's a cutie fly inclusion in this? Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> Does that do something it to has, you? It has a cutie fly in it because both cutie fly and Rabombi have free retreat. Oh, that's, that's good. That's very good. Okay. It's a very good pivot Pokemon. We've yeah. seen in different decks the or decks the utilization of like cast form mm -hmm. um, and like the little dark dudes decks. 
free retreat is just good like free retreat is just awesome and then you know the manaphy in there pukamuku sean this is one of our favorites i think on the yep. pod pitch a pukamuku is the ability basically you make your card or you make your deck a 59 card deck mm -hmm. you use the ability once per turn put pukamuku at the bottom of your deck and draw a card yep yep and then i guess it doesn't stop you from decking out necessarily but it definitely can help elongate a game just a little bit do you want to know what the deck out loop is sean uh i'm trying to i want to see if i could figure it out i'm looking at this here i don't is, has it got something to do with flannery because i don't think any of the other stuff does deck out stuff does it not necessarily the way that you get rid of deck out is that eldegoss v hiding down there sean do you remember what Eldegoss V's I attack do. is? I do. For two colorless, it does, what, 50 damage, and then you shuffle this Pokemon onto, into your deck or put it on the bottom of your deck, right? You do, I think uh, I think you shuffle it at the bottom of your deck. I'm not sure. It's but once like you get into the loop, the Eldegoss is just, it's there. Um, yeah. It's into the deck, so not necessarily on the bottom, but usually when you're doing this loop, like, Eldegoss is your deck, right? <laughs> like, I mean... <laughs> That's that's good and useful. You still, I think, suffer if anybody plays a Marnie on you. Well, right? here's the thing. You usually have plenty of other cards in your deck because you have something like Team Yells Cheer, a supporter mm. that allows you to put a combination of three Pokemon or supporters mm. back into your deck. So it's almost like a Brock's Grit okay. type of deal. And then you have other cards like Bird Keeper. And reminder, Eldegoss V has that ability that you can get a supporter, a supporter out of your deck from the discard pile and put yeah, it to your hand so you can build up supporters um or you can constantly loop you can loop you can so loop you get two. eldegoss because you have the chinchinos right you're discarding you're drawing the rest of your deck right you only have like two cards that you need to draw yeah. anyways so you just do that you can loop like team yells cheer bird keeper right constantly getting those out of the discard to be able to pivot maybe you don't have her bombi you can use bird keeper to pivot into the Eldegoss, or if you have Rabombi on the field, you just retreat and use something like Team Yell's Cheer instead to constantly refill your deck of these Pokemon and constantly recycle them in. So very, very interesting shot. Again, this is a very hard deck to play. It is Control. It is by Sander, who is the king of Control, in my opinion. I, I There are not many people in this world that could have made <laughs> top eight with this list at this event. Oh my god. Uh not not a deck that I think is for me, but I know Jake this will probably be like control is back and you were like okay, let's go. Let's go. I think that I think that playing control even if you're not a control player, like a person mm -hmm. who likes playing control or excelling control, I think playing these decks every once in a while is very good. Yeah. Right? Cuz it makes you think differently about the game. It makes you think of a different style and it makes you also map out your turns right i think control does a really good job of helping you map out future turns right especially maybe you're playing like urshifu like mapping out your prize trade like mapping out future turns of what they can do how you'll respond and it it better helps you prepare so i would i mean i would seriously recommend like trying the deck playing the deck it's it's it it sucks you're gonna get frustrated <laughs> right but like it's it's rewarding when it works and it makes you like it feels really good to like win and it, it really helps you out be able to play the game <laughs> um jake is there one more deck that you want to talk about from this weekend i think maybe the one that is most notable is the fact that toward reckliff mm -hmm. played switching cups <laughs> okay okay let's go look let's take a look at that in yeah. his deck Sean in his mu v max deck yes he played mu v max but Sean, do you know what switching cups does It says, I think I, I just read it, and it says switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. It's basically a Rangaroo as an item. It does. It's just a Rangaroo, but yeah, an item card. It, it, I it's mean, really interesting. It works with Rotom Phone, right? You can, does, doesn't does Rotom Phone allow you to put something on the top of your deck? Yeah. It does. So it's just, it's just a Rotom Phone combo that doesn't require you to have a Pokemon on the bench. It's it's very cute in yeah. my opinion. It's very interesting and <laughs> I don't know. I think switching cups the inclusion in that is really really fun, is really really cool. So, yeah. I mean, 
outside of that, it's it's pretty much me v max. You know, you got your three two Mew line. You have four Genesects. You got two Meloettas, Oracorio, few two Fusion Strike energies, some Rose Towers, Cramomatix, Ultra Ball via. Like it's 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 a Mew v max phones list and switching cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. I mean, I will say one one basic Psychic energy mm -hmm. and one Training Court. Because as we as we said, Sander is the one. Uh, I, I not Sander. A uh, Tord. Tord obviously talks to a lot of the different players. He knew that Sander was also looking at control, and mm -hmm. I'm sure in the back of his mind he was like, "I should this probably play Stealth Snort." There he has to. Like, yeah, I was like, "I should he has to play Cry of Destruction." <laughs> yeah, I, like I need to have I need to have some way to cycle my basic energy in this deck. Because look, a lot of people will probably just take the L to uh, <laughs> control. But if you know that Sander's going to be in this event and you're also a top player like Robin uh, toward, you know, mm -hmm. any of the Limitless guys, Pedro, Joe, Bernard, you probably are thinking about, OK, I need to play at least one basic energy because <laughs> I know Tord's going to do something wild. Yeah. Oh, my uh, and there's plenty of other decks as well that were in. Again, big shout outs to Pokey Stats that were a big part of like retweeting and sharing like all these lists. I will say, Dal Polo is going to have a stream. Limitless tweeted like just before we started recording this podcast that there is going to be a stream for this regional. And so check back to their uh, Twitter account to be able to find that information if you want to go follow them the metapod retweeted them so if you mm -hmm. follow us at metapod tcg you'll be able to find that tweet uh very easily but if you want to follow pokey stats as well which i very much recommend at pokey stats tcg is where you can find them but um sean do you how do you how do you want to do this how do you i want mean to you this? want you wanted to do a soapbox so i have not seen this clip jake so okay to the listeners gear switch you know insert the car squealing as we turn around real quick but to end off the pod i think that jake wanted to get on a soapbox about ptcg live do you want me to just play this clip from flex daddy righteous uh that happened and then you can discuss what you see yeah so um i think this is kind of the this clip is going to be the embodiment i guess i should say of how i feel i have not personally played ptcg live because one i do not live in canada and two <laughs> i have not i've been way too busy to bother to get like a vpn yeah or whatever if vpn if you want to sponsor the, i'm just kidding uh, anyways but i've been able to watch a lot and it's kind of how i feel so they'll be able everybody will be able to hear the clip right sean yeah yeah it should have a desktop audio so i'll go ahead and play it jake and you you know I don't think you'll be able to hear it, but the, the listener should hear it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and play. Listen, the Jake, I hear you, man. It's a lot of buttons, bro. It, it the UI is like kind of it's kind of cringe. It's kind of cringe. When you there's like the, the hardest thing is when you search for a card that you don't own, you have to click the filter to say you don't own it. And then you have to close the tab. And then you have to open it back up to search for the card. And then it doesn't automatically go away after you find the card. It's definitely cringe. Many people are saying this. <laughs> is it over? I, I believe so. He's just saying that PTCG Live is cringe. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what it all... Big shout out to Flex Daddy Righteous and Riley Munder over at the Tag Team Podcast. They do an incredible job. I've been on the podcast with them. But it's... PTCG Live is just baffling to me. Like, we've talked about a little bit, like, the quality of life issues. But, Sean, the game just, like, they try to fix it. Like, mm. okay, so there are bugs that happen. It is a beta, right? And they release patches to try to fix these bugs. But it breaks the game even more in ways that make me understand. I don't know if they're even like checking these before they release them. Because in the recent patch, this is kind of the first point of why I'm frustrated with TPCI right now. That's the soapbox today. After they released the recent patch that happened, guess what the next bug was? 
the next big bug. Was it the timer bug? Well, that's one. That's, that's, I mean, okay. that's, been that's a whole the other entire one. time. Okay, well, but that's not what I'm referencing. But that's <laughs> one of the reasons that I'm mad. But but one of the big things, the new bugs that came out was you couldn't Eliza Sparkle onto the bench. That's the whole card. That's the whole card in the most popular deck. Yeah, and so when you're testing the beta, in my opinion, I don't know, Mew VMAX being one of the most popular decks, one of the best decks out there, you probably test Mew VMAX, right? And Mew VMAX, you're going to use Eliza Sparkle every single game, like turn one. I mean, you're Mew VMAX, use it. Mew VMAX, wasn't Mew VMAX a card when they first launched PTCG Live that was the ladder card that you could win? Yeah, like, like, ah. Uh. It's if not you didn't test one of the most used mechanics right now in the Pokemon trading card game, like, are are you even testing it? Like, before <laughs> you release these patches? Like, I don't, I'm going to be honest, like, I don't know what goes in the back end mm -hmm. of, I don't know what goes in the back end. You don't know end. what goes in the back end, but you know what comes out, and it's this crap. Yeah, I know what comes out. <laughs> I know what I see when I'm watching streamers, like, stream this game, and I mean, that that whole clip that you watched was I was watching JW Crewall Flex Daddy Righteous edit his deck and he had to click like four buttons to start editing his deck. We're on PTCGO, right? I just click edit deck and boom, I can go edit my deck now. Like I didn't have to jump through this loop or scroll all the way down or like realize that I was on the wrong screen. Like there was there's so many it's not even about like the the avatars being weird and breathing in unison and kind of creeps me out. It's not about, you know, the kind of excessive a little bit is actually about the excessive animations and how they take up so much time. Like literally there was a timer bug that trainer chip posted uh -huh. to where because of Mar like he the played Marnie Marnie. animation timer. Yeah. Yeah. Because of Marnie, like the timer came down for his turn. And so he played Marnie, but the clock kept going. You know, it did not stop. And because of Marnie, it chewed up like 14 seconds, which by the way, was the rest of the clock. And so he like lost out on his turn because of the Marnie animation taking like literally 10 plus seconds. And so it's, it's things like that, that just, I have no aspirations to play PTCG Live, right? The economy is great. The dusting system is good. It's going to be so easy to build decks, get new cards, things like that. But I just, I don't, I don't want to put myself in pain playing <laughs> this. I mean, you know, like that's how, that's how I feel. Like PTCG yeah. Live to me just feels like PTCGO. It just, it, it doesn't feel any different. I mean, it feels different, but it, it gives me the same amount of pain. It's just different pain, right? It's, 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 it's pain. It hurts, but different. You know what also got me pain? Being teased, Sean. <laughs> Being teased. So with last week, I think maybe we mentioned this at the end of the podcast or at the beginning. There was like a forum post mm -hmm. that from like an official TPCI person that runs the forums that said, hey, this week you're going to be getting big news about the Pokemon trading card game live. They didn't give any indication of like a, a, a new like update but expanding it. I think we even theorized. We, we, we thought something. we talked about it. We were like, oh, are they releasing it this week? Maybe. And then I think you said, actually, it could just be they released a beta worldwide. And I was like, ah, oh, that just feels weird because, like, they still have the team challenge stuff going on. But, you know, that was a thing people were discussing. Actually happened, Sean. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing happened. Literally no news. I don't know if it was because this update, like, made people outraged about all the bugs, and so they were <laughs> scrambling on these bugs. Maybe they were going to release it worldwide, but then they saw these bugs, and they are like, oh, sorry, you can't do it now. But, like... It, they haven't even said like apologies for anything like that because it was running the rounds on social media and nothing, nothing, so no the, news, Sean. I will say no news. Like I, oh, like I get it if you wait all the way until like Saturday or even on Sunday, right? Because in some places, like the week starts on Monday, right? And so maybe, maybe you like that's the leeway that I would give you, but literally nothing. Nothing. And you know what else they said nothing for, Sean? What was that? They said nothing about the registrations for EUIC, the European International Championships, 
They literally said in a reply tweet, I quote tweeted it on my personal Twitter. You can see it down there if you're watching it on YouTube or Spotify. You go check out the tweet. They haven't deleted it where it says, we'll let you know when the EUIC signups happen because guess what? Regionals for regionals and different events, they're capping it at like 500 players. Yeah. Like they fill up so freaking fast. And guess what? They didn't tell anybody unless you were browsing Twitter for everybody spamming about how EUIC <laughs> signups opened up. You would have no idea. And especially for a working person, maybe like myself. I mean, I wasn't planning on going because yeah, I can't but... just take a trip out to Europe, you know, randomly. But like, <laughs> just think if you were a normal working adult, like, and if you're a kid, you're in school. So how would you have been able to see this without getting like in trouble at work <laughs> or school? Like they just didn't. It's just like, who? <laughs> like, I, I'm, Sean, you do marketing for yeah, a living. Yeah. I do like event management for a living. I do marketing as well with my job. Like, I'm technically a professional content creator. Yeah. Like, it's infuriating to me. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, it's like, it's like the intern is just like tweeting and no, there's uh. no communication between anybody about like i mean i'm sure the intern i, I, I like well, that's, just a, that's just a statement but no, i'm I know, just trying I know. to say like it seems like everybody's just letting loose and like you know we're just saying stuff at this point you know just to just to get some smiles and hopefully everybody forgets i mean i'm sure there was like well intention on the person who tweeted we'll let you know and then you know whomever made the decision to push it live you're right. Did not properly communicate. There was some missed link there of like, hey, we're going to go live this day. Should we tell people? It's and live. I don't even know. Maybe they didn't plan for it to cap out so quickly, but like it's been hours. Yeah, it's been sold it's out already. So it dropped today for the listeners. We recorded this on Monday. Like 30 minutes, and that's because they didn't tell anybody. It would have sold yeah. out in 10 minutes if they sent an email or they they tweeted about it. Like, I mean, I, I will say, I mean, what if, what if, Jake? Because this was this is being run by RK9, right? Labs. What I, have if, no idea. I actually don't know is. who's running the tournament. Uh, the, the, the tournament software is RK9. That's where you sign up, I believe. Okay. So maybe, maybe this shadow drop was because RK9 servers could not handle an immediate influx of 500 people. Maybe it was like, we know it's going to get wild, so let's just shadow drop this and walk away. Yeah, but, but you wouldn't think that there's communication? Like, like, how can you reply tweet, right? We'll let you know. But then decide to shout like nothing makes sense to me. Like I don't see like I'm like uh, Doctor Strange where he's like I see one thousand different scenarios. And I'm like <laughs> I don't see any scenario where this was like a good idea or this was executed well. Like, I mean, it, it's. I will say this. Think about it though. From the, if you're purely looking at this in a numbers way, we sold out of our know. our first international championship in less than thirty minutes. Congratulations, team! Pokemon IRL is back walk away we like didn't Salt Lake have like a thousand players like, um but i i don't know what european regulations yeah it's that's that's where it gets weird i mean there's a lot of things that factor in but like arcanine has been in the game for a long time like arcanine labs there is no I, possible way <laughs> that when registrations open up that that website cannot handle like 400 players at You're the same time right. signing up there is i like Okay, I'm not a tech guy. I don't I don't know website development or like whatever, but like just they've been in the game so long that like I just I'm so mad at I like Ooh. my number one like in fear like my number one thing is communication in like mm -hmm. my office because it's literally my job uh -huh. to communicate and when people don't communicate like i get so mad like when like when a team switches up like the morning of they're like oh by the way the game is uh at night tonight instead of at 11 a.m like, like oh I'm okay sorry, i mean I that's like a completely different time of day but fine yeah like i gotta tell people like there are parents that want to like I, I like i'm usually the last person to know on some things um, thankfully my new university is really, really good about it. And so like, they're awesome, but like, it's that same thing. Like you have to communicate. You are a multi-billion dollar company. You are one of the biggest franchises in the world. Like how you can't let this happen. 
and I mean the Pokemon card game competitive is so small of a sphere, like whatever. But I'm I just, mean, I'm it's so a small mad. sphere. But I, Jake, it's a small sphere that all of the people at the Metapod care about. So yeah, everyone like, listening cares. So that that you know, I I you know I, I was I was told the other day minimization is as bad as as catastrophizing, right? And I think saying yeah. it's small so it doesn't matter. It's also it's minimizing for the people who care. I'm like sweating. Okay, Jake. Soapbox over Goose Fra Ba. I enjoyed. <laughs> leave, a, leave a review leaving my next soapbox topic, please. Um, <laughs> anyways, I will say, though, if you've made it to the end of this podcast, we'll give you a little bit of a leak. But Sean and I actually plan on releasing an extra YouTube video on friday not an, i swear it's not an april fool's joke like no. we've legitimately planned this we actually know what we're gonna do <laughs> like we're gonna record it we will be releasing a video on friday on our metapod podcast youtube channel so if you want in you want to make sure that you see that exclusive content on the metapod an extra podcast episode if you will um make sure to head over to the official metapod podcast youtube channel well, I, I won't spoil what it, what the topic is, but it's going to be exclusive content that you won't be able to get anywhere else. So you better be there or, or I mean, I hope you have a good day. <laughs> be there or be rhombus. All right, Jake, um, yeah. <laughs> sign us off. Thank you so much for listening to the Metapod Podcast, the book about TCG podcast that revolves around the evolving meta. We've been getting a lot of love on like different platforms and stuff lately. So super shout out to all of you. We love, we love the support that y'all give it and we can't wait for the next time we see you.